dealing with incidences from solid manure. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, Tommy, you want to field that question while the presentation's loading? We'll address this uh, question at the Q&A. You should go ahead, Melanie. Okay. But if anybody does want to go ahead and type additional questions in, uh, if they can be answered during the course of the presentation, we'll try to touch on those points as well. Okay. Um, when you're dealing with manure emergencies, the response methods are going to differ depending on the manure type. Um, when looking at solid manure issues, Things that can happen are actual spills, like Kevin talked about with liquids, discharges from outside manure piles, spontaneous combustion of manure or um, manure storage structure fires. When focusing on spill issues, um, when, when you compare liquids and solids, the pollution potential for the solids is going to be less than the liquid simply because of the physical properties. The liquid is going to be much harder to contain. It's going to move across the surface more quickly. And the solids are usually going to stay right around a small area where the spill site actually occurs. The liquid is going to infiltrate into the soil while the solids are going to stay on the surface, making it much easier to clean up. Where are some areas that we should pay attention to where these spills can occur? Areas such as where the manure is loaded into the spreader trucks or the hauling trucks, um, transport to local fields, so short distance hauling, long distance hauling like we know is going on in a lot of our, our heavy poultry producing states, and in the land application fields as well. What are some of um, simple preventive measures that we can do you know, like Tommy said, the key is prevention. Um, I think driver and land applicator training is key. I think that's going to be the most effective way to prevent these emergencies from occurring. Um, if you train your, your personnel, they're going to have more confidence in what they're doing, and it will give the, the producer peace of mind that his workers know how to handle emergency responses and handle that equipment. When we're looking at the loading areas, we, we know when you're loading those trucks, you're going to spill some manure. You simply need to clean that manure up so that there is a, a rain event and runoff occurs. You won't carry those nutrients off that site. You do not want to overload the trucks, even if you're just going a few miles down the road. Overloaded trucks are more likely to spill the material on the roadways. Um, they're more likely to have accidents and turnovers as well. In some cases, such as if, such if you're um, doing long distance hauling, you know you have to cover those loads if you're going down major highways. Um, if you're traveling to short distances, you may or may not need to cover um, the loads of manure. So you need to check your local and state regulations to determine that. Um, if you are required to cover, make sure you keep your covers maintained and replace them when, they're ne when they need to be replaced. Um, one good thing is to uh, walk around the equipment right before you leave the loading area. The one thing that causes spills is leaving that spreader gate open. If you do a simple walk around, you're going to catch that and you're also going to catch other um, issues that might make it unsafe to travel on the highways. All the equipment should follow a regular maintenance schedule as well as calibration at a minimum of once a year. And land application should follow rates specified in a nutrient management plan. So what do you do if a spill actually occurs? Well, it's, this is the third time you've heard it. Human safety is always first. Um, that's very important. You want to contact the proper authorities and emergency response, um, all the regulatory agencies that should be notified. 
You also want to have that phone tree handy. You know, having that phone list in your um, equipment, in your trucks, is going to come in handy if an emergency actually occurs. So you'll want to contact anybody you know that has equipment um, or resources to help contain or to clean up the spill. You want to inspect the site, determine where the surface waters are or the pathways to surface water. And with solids, it, it's not going to be nearly as difficult to um, clean those up because it's, it's usually just going to stay there right around the spill site. Simply having front end loaders and trucks to put the material in is going to be sufficient. There may be times like if it's a really wet area or um, spilt in um, a stream or something like that where berms and, and so forth might have to happen as as you have to do in a liquid spill. Um, so you want to scrape all the material up that you can, recover as much material as possible. And you also want to, I mean, when you, when you scrape those areas, you're gonna disturb the soil. So you'll want to do erosion control practices in those areas. And be sure to wash the manure off roads. Like Kevin had said, even with dry manure, if it rains and it gets wet, it's gonna be slick and dangerous, so it needs to be washed off those roads. And of course, you wanna do all the follow-up reports and follow up with those reporting agencies as required by your state. And you want to avoid the news, at least this kind of news. Crappy commute, manure spill halts traffic, causes accidents on Highway 99. In this case, this was a dump truck that didn't get the back gate latched. He went down um, a major interstate and spilt manure in two lanes down several miles of highway. Simply doing a walk around the equipment before he left the loading area would have prevented this accident from occurring. So preventive measures can, can go a long way in, in just avoiding these types of emergencies. Moving on to the next topic, which is discharges from manure piles. You know, when we're cleaning out our livestock buildings, we can't always go directly to the field and land a pond. There's going to be times when we need to, to store that manure before we can land apply it. In some cases, it's not going to be economically feasible to build permanent structures. And it's perfectly fine to pile manure outside as long as you do it properly. But if it's not, not done properly and that manure gets wet and becomes a liquid, a discharge can occur, which should be considered an emergency. This is an example of what not to do. The um, discharge from this area goes into a road ditch and um, goes directly into surface water, right, right downstream of that road ditch. Um, so what should you do in this area? It should be scraped up into bigger, larger, um, more neat piles, and it should be covered. And so every manure pile should, should be covered, yes, but is that all you need to do? Not necessarily. In this case, the manure pile is covered, it's covered very well. However, it is piled in a drainage ditch. You need to, to site the location of your manure piles properly because when they get a storm event here, water's gonna run through that drainage ditch and carry that manure and the nutrients with it. So manure should be piled on a flat, well-drained area. All the storm water should be diverted away from that area. You should locate your piles away from any surface waters or pathways to surface waters or pathways to groundwater. Um, manure does need to be covered, especially in areas like I am in the southeast when you never know if you're going to get lots of rain. Um, because if that liquid, if that manure does get wet and a discharge does occur, then that can be a big problem. And if the manure is exposed and you get that additional moisture, it's not only a water quality issue from nutrient losses, but it also increases the risk of spontaneous combustion, too much heat building up in those manure piles, which leads me to the last topic I'm going to discuss today which is the spontaneous combustion of manure piles. So where does the heat come from in manure piles? Um, the microbial activity, breaking that material down, produces heat. The amount of heat produced and retained in those piles can be influenced by the pile size, 
the larger the volume, the less surface area you have to dissipate that heat from the outside of the pile. If you compact the pile, you destroy the pore spaces within that pile, which is an escape route for that, that heat to escape from the pile. Too much moisture, the more moisture that's in that pile, it's going to increase your microbial activity and produce excessive heat. And layering wet litter and dry litter um, between those two areas, um, where those two types of litter meet, it's a heat producing area. So it's, it's not a good idea to mix those two types of litter together. So how can you pre prevent fires or spontaneous combustion of manure piles? The height of your manure piles should not be greater than five, five feet at the center. You don't want to make these piles too big. The easiest way to prevent storage fires or spontaneous combustion of manure piles is to monitor the temperature. Thermometers are relatively cheap, doesn't take much time to read them, and it can save a lot of money in the long run if you prevent a storage structure fire. If you get temperatures um, above 180 degrees or you see material kind of smoldering, then you'll want to remove that material and let it dry out before you um, add it back to the pile. You want to monitor the moisture and protect the, the piles from rain so they do not get that additional moisture added to them. Simply do not mix wet litter with dry litter. Allow the wet litter to dry out some before you combine it with the dry litter. Um, and just don't compact the manure piles. You want to leave that poor space available for the heat to escape. You want to put your manure piles in an area where there's plenty of air movement so that those piles can ventilate naturally and release that heat. So how do you respond to structure fires or manure pile um, combustion? You want to look for the warning signs. If you see the pile is smoldering, if you smell that burnt litter smell, or you're checking your temperatures like you should be, and you see temperatures above 180 degrees, then you know that you have an issue. If you're checking your temperature and it is above 180 degrees, do not handle that litter until fire department has been called and is on site. It's that temperatures above this where spontaneous combustion is more likely to occur. Um, the natural response to um, a fire is to add water. You do not want to add water to the manure. It can make the problem worse. Um, if you have temperatures that aren't 180 degrees, but you know your pile's getting too hot and you feel it's safe to do so, you're going to want to spread that manure out, give it time to cool down and release some of that heat and dry out some. And if you actually have a structure fire, of course, you want to call your local fire department to handle that emergency. And here are some additional resources on manure storage structure fires and prevention. And with that, I'll introduce the next speaker, which is Dr.